Hi everyone and welcome back to our little series about explaining Unreal Engine 5 and its blueprinting so you can become a more independent blueprinter. In the last episodes we've looked at inheritance and in this episode I want to tackle something a bit different now. I want to look at variables and functions. Also it help explain when you should use a function versus an event as that is often a question that gets asked me as well. Let's jump in and take a look at the Unreal Engine and take a look at these two things. So in the last episode, I introduced the idea of making a character base class, and in that we had health and name, okay, as two variables that we added to our thing. So a good rule of thumb to start off with is think about variable getters and setters specifically, okay. So when you think about health and name, let's think about functions that we are adding to get and set these values, and also do other things with them as well. So for example. We can make functions to help alleviate things maybe in the future too. So let's look at name here, for example. I want to make functions that will manipulate and use this name variable. So let's go to functions and add some functions in here. First of all, we're going to do get name. This is a, a getter. And this is simply just going to do a return node and return the name. Very simple. Yep. Um, why do we do this rather than just get the name from the thing? Totally can. You know, there's no harm in doing that. You totally could do that. The benefit that you have with a functionality of doing this is that you, you can insert something else in here to manipulate the return of this name. So, for example, if you want to hide a name specifically or check if someone's got permissions to actually get that name, you can do that check first before you actually get the variable of get name. Okay. Um, now, this being a getter, one thing you can do is you can make the function a pure function. So you see that option over here, pure. What pure functions basically do is they get the value um, as of and when it's needed. Okay, it doesn't keep it around, it just gets it and spits it out and that's it. It doesn't worry about doing anything else. For that reason, you don't typically want to do like setting information inside of the uh, pure functions. You want to mostly be used for calculations and getting information. So good tip, pure functions makes a lot of it. And a pure function, by the way, is the difference between doing get name like this and comes up like this. This is a pure function, the green ones are. And if I make that not pure, it makes it a blue function okay, where it has to be executed. Okay. So in this case, we're just getting something, so we just pure it. Get a little bit better. Get name. Now, one thing that is important is to be careful how you name and set up the variable names and function names of your classes. So you have to be very careful of things that are what we call reserved name, uh, reserved names, reserved strings. And so the word name uh, is used transactionally throughout the whole entire engine in various different ways. As you saw, if I do get name. There's stuff in here that already exists that is called get name, but that get name curve is not my get name. Yeah. So what might, might be better is to rename this one to be a bit more unique. So I'm going to rename it to get character name. Yeah. And likewise with the name of the character, I can rename this one to be character name. Now there's no chance of me getting this wrong. It isn't always going to get the right function I want. Okay. Um, so that's the getter. Now we're going to do a setter. So add another function, set character name. And we're going to drag out our character name variable, set it. Now, because we are setting a value, you can't have this as a pure function because it needs to change to something. But uh, that will be a good idea to leave it like this. However, what I think yeah, is quite useful to do when you are setting values is to confirm whether or not you're successful in doing so. Um, and maybe output the final result if you need to as well. So I'm going to do a return node. And I'm going to add a return of the word return. And we'll just tick the box in this case. And if you want to output the name, you can put the name in it too. New name. Its value. In very simple function, set character name. 
But because I've got the inputs and outputs on this, again, I can go inside of this and I can manipulate what actually happens here. So, for example, you may do a set character name, but you might want to do a check to see if any other characters have the same name. That can go inserted into here before you do anything else. Now, if you're working in a team, you may want to be careful with this because you don't want a designer by accident to, when they want to change the name of a character, just to do that. Now, you, may, you may want to force them to use this. In which case, if that's the case, then you have to, you have to make this thing private. But making it private like this means you can't access this type of node set value outside of the character base class. They can only call the function. So you may want to do things like that as well. That's getters and setters, but there's other things we could do here too. So again, you always want to think about what functions would be cool or useful to have in your uh, in your classes. So you've got get name, set name. We could do something like query name. So query name. Uh, nope. And I can put in a name value. Uh, name to check against. And I can just simply just go character name in here and compare these two together. So if that is equal to equal exactly character name. I can put that in there. Yeah. And I can say the return value of this is exact match. Turn it on. Now, I have other options in here too. I can go name to check against. I can drag out and do equals equals and do case insensitive and compare that to character name. And that can go into another branch. And that won't be an exact match, but we'll have another one in here. So match uh, case insensitive. And turn it on there, for example. And if none of them match, turn it off. So no matches. And that's just one thing that we can do here with this query name thing. Again, this is just getting value, so we can make this a pure function. So when I do query name, I put a name in there, and it'll give me what option it is. Now, a thing like this might actually be beneficial to have as a macro instead of a function. Why? Because if I wanted to say, put in a name here of like Ryan, and I want it to check to see if it's an exact match, or if it's, I don't care if it's an exact match or uh, insensitive or whatever. I have to put in up like branches to determine what ways it should go and, and things like that. So what actually would be better off to do that probably with is a macro instead. So a macro is basically a bundle of uh, options on our uh, function or event that we can actually condense into a single node. Okay, so something like this, where you're going into and getting multiple outputs, rather than having two booleans coming out, I can make this a macro instead. So I'm going to macro and query. I'm going to put it slightly differently so it don't get any issues. Character name. And on the macro here, I can add in the variable name. And that'd be a text value. And then the output wise, I'm going to add in two execute pins. Exact match. Uh, case insensitive match. And no match. And now what I can do is I can take the stuff that I've been doing in here, put it into this one instead. Name in that. 
Oh, I need to put an input as well. I usually like to put the executes at the top. So exact match can go into that branch there. Case sensitive can go into that one, and no match can go into this one. So this is working a lot better because in my event graph now, I can use query character name and get the exact thing I want to get out of it without having to do branches and branches and branches. So I would argue this one is a lot neater and easier for us to use rather than that. So I'll probably get rid of that one. But much like the inheritance stuff that we talked about last episode, you can also make these, uh, in, like, override them or extend them further if you want to. So let's say on the first person character here, I actually want to change how that function is going to work. So in functions, I go to override. And you can see in here, we've got get character name. I can override that to bring out something else. So I can put in some bit in the middle here to change how the name's going to come out of this. Now, one big question I get quite a lot of is what's the difference between events and functions and why should you use one over the other? It's a good question. So, so events and functions ultimately are the same kind of thing. The main difference between events and functions is that a event uh, is running on basically like on a, like a compute. It is not running... In a single cycle, it is the cycle. So when I call event a damage, it goes one, two, and then three, four, five. It goes along the line, keeps doing the whole thing. Whereas when it hits a function, that function is going to execute and complete inside that single tick. Okay. So when I do this door, for example, it's going to go from here, it'll click start it. Let's say, let's, let's start down to one like each second. So on the first second, it's going to do this one. Second second, it's going to do this one. Third second, it's going to do this one. Inside that second second, it's going to do all the stuff related to this. Okay. This is because events can be latent, delayed, and slowed down uh, because of this. This is why you can do things like delays in events, but not on functions, because a event has to go uh, will go sequentially, whereas a function has to execute and complete within that single moment. So why use functions at all? Why not just use events? So put the big problem that events have is they have a race conditions. So for example, if I let's imagine these two are going off at the same time. Okay. Sometimes this may execute quicker than this one. And some other times this one may execute quicker than this one. There's no way to really guarantee it without forcibly slowing it down. Functions don't have that issue. Because they are being ran straight away. Um, also with functions. Because they are completing. And they're impure. They're going to leave behind a bit of dirt behind. Which is their values. Okay, in Which we can use those values elsewhere. We can carry on and drag these out as we want. Events you don't have that functionality. You have to keep dragging out lines everywhere you want it to go. Functions also have the ability to have local variables. Which can be reset every time the function is called. These local variables are working variables, allowing you to use them as like temporary variables whilst you're calculating, working out stuff inside the function. It can be very powerful, very useful things indeed. Events don't have this. So when should you use an event versus when should you use a function? Now, I particularly will typically try and make it so that events are reserved for things that are going to be, as the name implies, eventful. So these are reactions to triggers or the triggers themselves, whereas the functions are sort of the stuff that's happening because of that. So, for example, on this door that we made in the very first episode, where we got this open door and closed door mechanic, help clear this up and make this a little bit nicer, I would have this, say, collapsed to a, actually, let's do it like here, and collapse the function, and we'll do open door. And the benefit of having this as a function is now I can call this other places as well. Yeah, I don't have to um, 
reuse the same code and copy and paste it every way I go. Because the more times you copy and paste it, the more likely it's going to have human error in it, which is most of the time the issue that happens with bugs. And so being a, a separate uh, event or function, we can actually now trigger that function with other things too. So let's say, for example, uh, the a good one for this is like character crouching. Okay, you make the crouch a function, not a event. And the reason why is because you can make it now so when the player let goes of the key, they just um, they uncrouch, but when they get hit, take damage, they uncrouch. When they sprint, they uncrouch. You can make it do other things too by just dragging in one function rather than going through and copying the code over to each individual event. So try to do the things like the event, the condition of the event. So why should this event fire if at all? And if it does, what is the outcome of that? And the open door is happening here. In terms of event dispatches, a good rule of thumb for this is that when has something happened on the object, in this case, the door's opened, it might be useful to know when the door's opened. Yeah. So event dispatcher makes sense for that case. Now, obviously, this is just the start of your journey into looking at variables and functions and how to best manipulate them. But we're going to go through some more examples of those in a moment and explain in a lot more detail with a lot more examples of how best use cases for different variables and functions and macros as well in making different systems for your games. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all our patrons and user members for their continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching. Make sure you stay subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.